Our mission, our purpose for the school board work session is to build trust and teamwork, to exchange information, and when applicable, to provide direction in order to facilitate efficient and effective decision making at regular board meetings. Tonight's topic is superintendent search. Tonight's outcomes are that board members will provide direction on the timeline, advertising venues, and community engagement plan, and be informed about benchmark superintendent salaries. Uh, with that, we'll do a check-in. Uh, Robert, Robert Gerhardt, school board member. Stephanie Fortner, school board member. Jim Baguette, school board member. Katie McDonald, executive director of community resources. Barb Olson, director of school community relations. Mike Ostafi, school board member. Jessica Craig, school board member. And Director Douglas will not be able to join us tonight. Uh, oh, uh, Craig and Mary, would you like to introduce yourselves, join in the uh, introductions? Absolutely. I am uh, Mary Fassbender, Midwest Regional Director for Ray and Associates. And good evening again, everyone. Craig Morris is also with the firm. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will turn things over to Judy. Thank you so much, and good evening, Chair Gerhardt and board members. I'm so excited, hopefully, to really effectively facilitate this evening's meeting and uh, efficiently translation quickly. No, I'm kidding. Um, so um, if you take a look at the agenda, we'll be taking a look at the search timeline, the benchmark district superintendent salaries, uh, recommendations from Ray and Associates for advertising venues, and then uh, Barb will be sharing her community engagement plan. So those are the four main areas that we'll be discussing this evening and we'll be um, pursuing your direction related to that. So if you wanna pull out to start what we call the search timeline, which is the colored document, or you can look at it on your screen. I'm just going to walk you through this. And then uh, Craig and Mary, I might hand off to you, or Barb, I might hand off to you to get an update as far as where we're at, okay? Sounds good. That's good, okay. So if you look at stage one, that very first box at the top, board input and preparation, as you know, on the 20th, we had a planning meeting with our consultants, and you did see this document just kind of not at a very high level. It was in your packet. On the 21st, we've begun already preparing information for the district promotional flyer and the job description, and I'm also looking at the online application form. So I am ready to send the application form, and the reason I'm just looking at it is because the changes we can make to the application form are limited, and so what we're doing is making sure we have the right questions related to Minnesota law, and our district attorney will also be looking over that. So um, that application is very straightforward. Then as far as the promotional flyer work, I know that is in process, right? Barb will be talking, yes. yeah, Barb will be talking about later about that later this evening and then on the 21st and then we also have notify all associates and other professional contacts of vacancy and I would look to Craig and Mary have you already begun notifying uh, we will do that after this meeting so yes okay okay so you'll begin after this meeting yes, yes okay. that's correct all right and then um, Barb this says November 22nd which was the date we had last time can you talk a little bit about uh, contacting constituents and stakeholders for the input meeting schedule in January? If you're okay, I just wanna go through that, wanna go through the plan? Absolutely. Because we've got it all in the plan. Are we okay, Bob? Yep. Okay, good. So any questions about what's already happened? Okay, good. So now on the 14th, uh, there were two surveys that sent out. Uh, board members, you should have received a survey and also Barb, we're in process of sending out the community survey, correct? It's already online? It's already online. Okay, and then we move to tonight, and that's the 19th here at the work session, and we're here tonight to basically redefine or continue to define our search process. We still have multiple decisions we need to make, but we've also chopped it up so that we're making them just in time as we learn more about the candidates and those kinds of things. So as we walk through, I think you'll understand better uh, what we're looking at. So then I'm down to January 16th to the 17th. Those are the community engagement meetings. They're actually different dates, but we'll go through those in the plan. Those are different dates, so mm -hmm. 
Yep, those will be now modified, okay. And then on January 25th is basically the deadline for Ray and Associates to receive all of the stakeholder input and information. Then we use that information to create the prom promotional flyer. And that draft is due for board members to review on the January 30th work session. So that promotional flyer is basically our announcement. That's the welcome and please submit your application. And so at the 30th work session, um, what the board will work on at that work session is to agree to that superintendent profile so that we can push out the, pro the um, posting. Um, you'll reach consensus on the salary range and Ray and Associates will talk to you more about that. And you're also going to reach consensus on what will the actual face-to-face -face interview process look like. Ray and Associates does the screening, but the board needs to actually conduct the interviews and those kinds of things. And so you'll need to agree on what that experience will be for the candidates. So at the next work session then on the 30th, once we're done tonight, we'll finalize the announcement, we'll reach agreement on the salary range, and then basically the next day you're going to post. Okay, questions about that? I have a couple of clarifications. Um, Mary and Craig, the, the promotional flyer that is the flyer that has the superintendent profile, I'm believing that you'll work with our staff to develop the district descriptive information. You create the profile, but there's some information about the school district itself that also goes on, on that flyer, right? It's an opportunity for the district to celebrate uh, successes, and usually the front page of the flyer is just that. It may even contain some copy of, of schools or, or students if you have permission to use them. And then uh, it can include things about academic achievement, uh, your strategic plan document, if that's apropos. And then the back page is not only the profile, but how a candidate would go through the process of applying and what the deadlines are and the salary range. So who from your team would work with me on the front side? Kathy would. Okay. And um, I'd also like to share that I sent you an up the communication engagement plan that has the dates for the community meetings. So maybe after this meeting, you can review that and update the dates in here for those dates. Yeah, we could do that together at some other juncture in the next couple of days, yeah, cer okay. certainly. Okay, so that will be, so we get into the end of January and at the end of that work session, we pretty much will have completed stage two of the process. And you see we have five stages. So moving into stage three, this is where the, um, basically the position is posted and we take a look at um, Ray actually is screening applicants as they come. People are, are posting for the positions and applying for the positions. And then the absolute deadline is March 4th. So at that, during that time, Ray is looking at the applicants and even I believe you're conducting, Mary or Craig, you're actually initiating the uh, screening process from the get-go as they come in, correct? That's correct. Okay, and so between January 31st and, and March 4th, we just are kind of waiting and exciting, excited to see who applies for our superintendent position. Any questions about that? We're good? Okay, moving on to stage four. Uh, March 19th, we listed that as a potential work session. Up on January 30th, we will have already agreed to what the interview process will look like. And so on the 19th, we'll either decide it will be a combination work session and then individual board member work. And what needs to be done on that date is to review initial Skype interviews that Ray and Associates conducts. You're looking at around 12 to 15 candidates. You would view their initial interviews. And then those top candidates, excuse me, then you would de determine which of those top candidates you would select to come for the first round of the in-person interviews. And so because we have, have to talk about rights to privacy on the part of the applicant and those kinds of things, we, for now we've listed it as a potential work session because we're just not sure what we need to maintain private and what can be public. So I think the discussion on January 30th 
is going to clarify that for us and we'll make sure that our district attorney is here at the work session so that we can be really, really clear on what we can do. Um, Craig or Good. Mary, do if you I wanna could, add anything? Yeah. yeah, if I could add something to that. That meeting is typically quite long uh, depending on what format you're able to do, uh, you know, with your legal team and have it be viable. But we present uh, the candidates that we've screened out, and that that number can range from anywhere from 10 to 15. Um, and you'll see all their paperwork, and you'll also uh, be able to see the video responses they have to the three questions that each of them have been asked. And so we have individual board members make their own decisions about who they feel are the top candidates. And we do that through a force choice matrix. And then out of that meeting, you would end up with your round one candidates. And typically, that's about six or seven people. Um, so that would take you into the next stage that I assume Judy's going to go through with, or I can continue however you want to do it. That would be the first round that you see on for the week of 4-2. And at that juncture, you would need to if there are six or seven candidates, you would need to commit to two days, two evenings that you're going to conduct those interviews. Uh, in a perfect world, if there, was six, there were six candidates, you would do three one night and three the next night. And those, those interviews usually are about an hour and 15 minutes in length. So if, if board members can look at calendars in the near future and determine what two dates that week of or two will work for you, then we can get those finalized and um, be able to you know, support you and once again doing the matrix to determine who becomes your final candidate. And typically the finalists are in the numberhood of two to three, sometimes it's four. Um, it's uncanny how there's almost always a natural break in the top candidates and then there's a gap and then sort of the also ran candidates. So uh, that is of the week of 410, which is that final stage five. You have to have discussions at this meeting that Judy is alluding to on the 30th of January, how you want to do that format. If you want to have there be some community forums uh, or if you want representative groups to meet candidates and what kind of sometimes board members will do an informal, maybe two board members take some time and tour a candidate to some of the buildings in the district. Your district is too large to do every building, obviously, but a schedule would have to be worked out so candidates aren't stepping on each other as you go through the district. Uh, and then the, the second round final interviews would take place you know, after that. So maybe the candidate arrives in the morning, they do some informal touring, maybe they have an informal lunch with a board member or two, and uh, then you decide if you want some kind of a public input in the process and then your board would conduct final interviews uh, during that week. So that would be a discussion to determine what that format would look like. We can send you examples of lots of different formats that have been used successfully, uh, but it's really the board's call as to whether they want the community involved once again after they've had the stakeholder uh, forums, whether you want to have them involved in the actual end game where you have your, your finalists. We don't recommend you plugging in something like that when you have six or seven candidates because candidates will bow out if the numbers and the odds aren't in their favor. When they get down to two or three, they're gonna have you know, indicated to their home districts or home employers that they are a finalist and they accept the fact that that's all gonna become quite public. So again, your legal will have to work with you to determine how that best can happen. Uh, and if we have to indicate to candidates that's not feasible, then just know that there might be some people that won't be willing to participate. They don't want to rock the boat in their home districts or home employers until they believe they have a very good uh, chance at coming to OCO. So um, that's, the re that's the reasoning behind their potential withdrawal. Okay, thank you, Mary. And so then uh, April 10th, there's a final meeting with the consultant following the last interview. And I believe also that process is a forced, forced decision-making matrix It is, approach. yeah. Okay. 
And then, of course, then the board would offer the position and we would have our own attorney work out the details of a contract. And then, Mary or Craig, could you say a little bit about this last item, the board self-assessment survey results? Yes, that's part of our overall um, service to you as part of the contract. It, it's not at any additional cost. So we will come uh, conduct either via Skype or in person uh, a self-assessment survey, which is really board governance, and it, it, it includes seven distinct areas of governance. But we, we like the new superintendent to fill it out as well as the, the six board members. And it, it really gives you a head start on seeing where there may be some uh, differences of philosophies or opinions, and you can kind of work through those. And it, it, it really solidifies the relationship between the new person and the board because you'll get all those results and you'll, you'll have a very clear idea of where you have congruence and where maybe you have some things that there are some gaps with. Any questions about that? So I wanna go back to a couple things. First of all, Craig, could you share with the school board what you shared with me earlier today as far as the information, without sharing any details, the information you've received from board members thus far through the telephone conversations and the surveys, what, uh, you, what your initial um, observation was? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, we have yeah. board members. Yeah. Separated, um, three, we took three and three, so I don't want my characterizations in any way to uh, be taken as the collective. Um, but, and, and I think Mary, uh, this also apply to you if you wanna respond. I would say generally what what I would tell the board tonight is um, from from what I've gathered either in formal or, or through the um, gathering process of interviewing the three, there is cohesion. Um, there is a strong commitment to collaborative decision making. There is a recognition that there may be some philosophic um, differences but that the board is intent on trying to make the best decision that it can um, and to reflect positively, representing the entire district. Those are the characterizations I would share tonight. Um, and I think it goes back to the, the question and the response about the board self-assessment. You know, you've all worked together um, already and so you have a sense of each other and you, what your leadership styles are, what you're looking for, um, what your commitments and passions are. I think this process though, you will also learn things about each other and about this district, um, both through the screening and the interviewing process of, of um, assessing candidates, but also the point that, made, that Mary made earlier, it's really a new starting point um, when you bring another person on board, in this case, the new superintendent. Um, so I think it's really healthy to have the board assessment opportunity to sort of do the deep introspective look um, at uh, each other and group and then to be able to talk about and be transparent about those things especially with the new superintendent coming on board it just it just helps to really i think meld um, and create that opportunity for even more collaboration um, and for really uh, the best chance of success possible for both the superintendent and the board so Mary, I, I don't know, um, do you wanna talk about some of your observations as well? Yeah, I, uh, I commit to board members when I interview them that what they tell me stays with me. So I, I won't share specifics, uh, but in terms of what Craig has said, I echo those sentiments, his feelings about the board, I got that same sense. Uh, I think there is a keen awareness that um, there, there are some divides in terms of uh, your diversity, which, which pose challenges and are things that the board you know, knows that they want to have someone who can help them address um, those issues going um, and be able to serve students in the best possible ways that, that they can. Uh, so overall, I think I see this board as, as you, the people that I interviewed as, as very positive, uh, as very passionate about the, what, what they are doing as board members and realizing how important this decision is in selecting the new leader. Okay, so 
Moving on, uh, the other item I wanted to circle back is that Mary had indicated that for the first round of in-person interviews, the board would need to commit to two nights. And we have, right now, we have April 2nd. Is the board interested in locking that in now, or would you like to wait until January 30th when we're getting a Monday little bit? Monday night, right? The second is a Monday? Yes, it is. And, and just, just to clarify, that's the week of April 2nd. So it could be any two nights that week. That, that is the first day back from spring break, in case anyone is coming back from Cancun late on a Sunday night. Are you? No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> just saying. Uh, I guess my only question is, is uh, I think, Mary, you had stated that every interview is one hour and 15 minutes long. We could have three, possibly four, depending on if we have th uh, six to seven members or candidates. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't a lot of boards will start those interviews between five and five thirty, and the district will provide them some different types of foods that they can, you know, come and go with in terms of when there's a break between interviews. You know, if they want to get up and stretch their legs, we usually try to put about a fifteen-minute break in between each interview. Um, so starting them at that time, you're still, theoretically, you would be done by, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I say I vote we start at 5. Are we coming up against a board meeting on the 3rd? It's not on my calendar. Not on mine. Okay, I would be okay with Monday and Tuesday, the 2nd and the 3rd. Good with that? I'm good with that, too. Me, too. It's fine. Okay. And then... Um, I would second Stephanie's idea of starting at five. I would be okay with that if everyone else was. Just for me? Anybody else? At this point, we'll say yes. Oh, okay. No, my new employer will say. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll just yeah. pre block it. I don't know yet. Oh. No, not yet. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Mike? What? Yeah, five or five thirty. I'm fine. Second or third. All right, so um, we will lock in two interview sessions, what we'll call work sessions, on Monday, April 2nd, and Tuesday, April 3rd, both beginning at 5 o'clock. And we anticipate three to four candidates that we'll be interviewing each night, so plan for a nice long evening on both nights. So we'll say 5 to 10. Would that work? That's good. I'm seeing yep. heads nod. Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. I mean, maybe I have something on my calendar, but I do show a, a board meeting on the third. But I, I, there's a bunch on there. Yeah, this may be an old invite. Okay. Okay. So we'll make sure all of that gets posted, and and we'll make sure. I'm anticipating you also want to um, make sure we have it in the boardroom. And yep. Okay. Are those public? Yes. Okay, any other questions or comments, board members, about your walkthrough on the timeline? I have some questions regarding the community engagement meetings. So we put out uh, some links, we've told parents, we put something on the website. Uh, have we reached out to uh, the city councils of our major cities to get something on their website to speak in front of them between the second and the ninth when most of them have their first meetings of the year in order to get on TV and you know at, at with their constituents and talk about that not yet but when I go through the communication plan that would be a great time to talk about what are you thinking of that I may not have thought of yet yeah so most of the meetings are on the second eighth and ninth of of, uh, of uh, January prior to our stakeholder meetings on the 16th or 17th. So those would be the, the days, the 2nd, 8th, and 9th, that we would need people in front of boards uh, and emails uh, you know, to uh, their websites to have them post the link. It would be very helpful to, to so have I'll that. So I'll hang on to that thought for our community engagement discussion. Okay, sure. The timeline looks great to me. Thank you for your work on that. Okay, anyone else? So board members accept the timeline, the draft timeline as is? Mm -hmm. We're good yep. to go. Okay. Yep. 
check that item and out. And then right there, yep. the, the only th other thing as a parking lot placeholder is to have the board have some further discussion after you've get, you know, pondered a bit how you want to do your final list. Do, do you want to involve community again at that point or don't you? What would that look like? Uh, and would you want to do some informal touring with candidates uh, the day of the final interviews or, you know, how do you want to construct that? And we, as I said, can give you a lot of different samples we can share with Judy and Barb and you, Robert, and then you can share that with the board and see what you think works best for you there. Okay. And we'll be going over that on uh, January 30th. Okay. Yeah. We'll get into the details there. Yeah, we've got some time before that. Okay. Yes. Okay, moving on to the second item, which are the benchmark districts and superintendent salaries. I'd like you to take. I'd like to take you through this document. That's the one that looks with the blue column highlighted. Okay, so um, the districts that we compared are our benchmark districts, other than Minneapolis and St. Paul. Minneapolis and St. Paul are very, very large districts, and their salaries are. Um, very high. So I didn't include them, however, I can get that information for you if you would like me to. Um, so on the left is the name of the district. And then um, these are this information is extracted right out of copies of the actual superintendent's contracts. So if you see the column third from the left that says base salary, that's what's quoted in the contract as their base salary. As we were going through the contracts, though, there are substantial benefits under what we call retirement savings, which is a district match to deferred compensation, and also uh, what they call a buyback for vaca unused vacation and paid leave. Sometimes it's PTO or sometimes it's sick leave. And so if you'll see in that middle column where it says buyback value, some of, that, some of those numbers are significant. So really what you want to focus on is what I call the total compensation package. What is, and that's what the board will need to talk about, what is the salary range for the total compensation package. To the right of that blue column, you'll also see some of the contracts have what they call a performance incentive. Our superintendent does, um, but that there's no, ne there aren't any necessary parameters there. However, there's a number of other contracts that have that. And then to the right of that is basically information about fringe benefits related to vacation and sick leave. And then just comparison, the incumbent and how many years experience. Also, you'll see the size of the district, percent free and reduced lunch, and percent students of color, just to give you an idea of um, what we're comparing with. So the, um, our superintendent's salary is highlighted in a darker, blue color. Now this information does not include costs for health insurance, group insurance, fringe benefits, TRA or FICA, because normally that isn't posted. So what we're thinking is once the board agrees to the total compensation package range, that's what we, we would call it. We would call it a compensation package and so it could be, we could determine some buyback, what's going to be deferred comp and those kinds of things. So I'd like um, Mary or Craig to talk about this a little bit and to talk about the importance of uh, the board reviewing this document. Yeah, I think this is huge in the sense of uh, when people make a decision to apply with the understanding that they would be picking up stakes and moving their family, uh, it's important for them to have a salary that they find attractive uh, in order to make that kind of decision and commit to that. So this, this is a key thing, and I think uh, being regionally competitive with the, the, the neighboring districts that you use as comparison is a great way to do that. Um, we also provided a, one that was from some districts in uh, Minnesota as well as a couple of other searches that are similar size districts, and that average came out, uh, which was just salary, no benefits, at just uh, about uh, 219000 So um, when you start adding benefits in, we tell candidates when we say the salary will be in the range of that it's depending on their experience and their educational training. So if you have someone uh, that fits the bill and you've selected that maybe has never been a sitting superintendent, uh, they may actually be slightly lower than whatever that range is as posted, and you could slide it slightly higher than that. So 
the board needs to be thinking about what that number is and then have in their mind, I, we are not going to exceed X uh, with regard to somebody who's, you know, a fabulous candidate and you certainly don't want to lose that candidate, but you also obviously have to answer to your stakeholders. Any questions about that? So basically, this kind of works like at, you've all been in negotiations, right? And so uh, at the 30th meeting, we'll need you to agree to parameters, just like you do with any kind of employment contract. And as long as we bring in the contract within parameters, that um, should not impact your de decision making as to whether or not you will vote for the candidate because you're voting twice. You'll vote for which candidate we make the offer to at a work session, and then of course, at a normal board meeting, you'll vote on the contract itself. And naturally, best case scenario is that we have a unanimous vote. That's what we all wanna work for, toward. So we certainly don't want any concerns about the compensation range to impact that potential. Questions, comments about that? Judy? Yes. Craig and, and Mary, I'm, I'm trying to be really good here tonight um, to make sure that we modulate everyone's time. I think that there's also a tendency to want to focus on the salary range, um, which I think then may cause us to focus only on the initial offering. I think it's also to keep in mind that while you're looking at the attraction of a candidate, this also plays out in the ability to retain good candidates. Uh, and what I mean by that is to be thinking about the range and or the, comp the, the total compensation package such that it isn't just about bringing someone on board, but also the ability to retain that person, especially um, in, in light of the very competitive environment that, that we're seeing. Um, and so I just offer that as some additional thought as you're thinking about range. Again, being mindful of your constituents and, and certainly um, budget constraints and, and being realistic with all of your um, constituents. Uh, but to look at the range, not just in terms of the initial, but also the longer term view of, of being able to retain a, a great performer and um, to incentivize someone to, uh, to do great work for you. And I think it's a it's a worth mentioning that we rarely see initial contracts that are less than three years. So again, that's the board making a commitment to a person, the person making that same commitment to you as a district. Uh, you know, we have a, a very good uh, track record in terms of placing candidates for longevity, and that's mo what most boards want. You don't want to have to turn around and go through this anytime soon. So uh, I think you should just you know recognize that typically you'd be making an offer for a contract that would uh, cover three uh, fiscal years. So uh, Mary or Craig, either of you can answer this. So is it our, uh, the board's expectation or can the board expect that you'll be coming to the work session on January 30th with a recommended salary range? Well, we typically have worked with boards where we provide a range and now you have provided an additional range and then the board is the one who determines based on those figures and what you know to be sort of your uh, parameters there, where you determine that. We're, we, we do not typically uh, impose that on a client. We, we give them information and we like, let them you know, look at the market and determine what they feel that should be. Okay, so if it's all right with board members, I'll, I'll work with Bob to figure out a way to facilitate that conversation January 30th. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, any other questions or comments about the salary information? We're good? Nope. Okay. Mary, Craig, you're still good? Yeah, we're good. All right, so the next document are, uh, is called the Advertising Venues. And so that's the document that has all the lists of the websites. On the top of the document are those uh, that begins with AASA job bulletin all the way down to school leadership. Those are recommended um, advertising options that uh, Ray, those are advertising options Ray is recommending. 
Uh, the district is responsible for the cost of the posting. Then, of course, after that, you have other recommendations, and all of those are free, and so we'll work with Ray and Associates to make sure they're, pa they're posted to all those websites since they're free. Hopefully, there's no reason we wouldn't want to. And then there are other optional advertising um, items listed. So, um, Craig or Mary, could you walk them through? This is your document. Can you facilitate the conversation here? Because we're going to, I believe we're going to need to get a decision tonight on this, correct? Yes, I think it's important to do that. I, I would uh, just step back one second and say that we we're not saying that we recommend every single one of these. Uh, these are ones that we have worked with and we know are, uh, are you know, vital in terms of a lot of people visiting them. Uh, but we do not see, for instance, you know, every school board pick every single thing below Education Week. Uh, they pick what they feel is going to serve their interests the best. So most of the time, uh, because districts are members of AASA and National School Board Association, those two are, as we say, no cost if you are a member. The big one that is a big ticket item is Education Week. And it's one of the few journals that people still read in print copy. Uh, most things have gone electronic and they're not something that, you know, you would need to worry about paying for a paper copy to be distributed. But I would say the majority of superintendents in the nation subscribe to Education Week. Um, and it would come out with, with a, an ad and you have options here. You could do uh, what is simply the Ed Week online for either 30 or 60 days, and that's minimal. Um, but if you look at the, the next bullet, $3,595, that's one that would put it into that written hard copy that's mailed to people, and it would run three times only, and it would also be on the website twice. So that's, that's really the biggest ticket item of all of these. Um, many people do or don't do uh, the Latino and the Alliance for Black Administrators. Um, it, it really depends on whether that's something that you have uh, utilized in the past and feel that it's important to do for this search. If you go down further while you're pondering that, most people do not do the other optional advertising. We've had a few people uh, who have done LinkedIn as one option, um, and we, we don't necessarily list that, but there, there are a fair number of people that are of a LinkedIn. These are not ones that we've received a lot of feedback as far as our clients uh, saying that they have felt that that has been worth whatever the cost was. Do we have circulation numbers for Education Week, the website hits, visits, unique eyeballs, and anything that would justify the price on that or put it into perspective? I don't have that. Uh, that's a great question and one that we should probably gather the information for. Um, I can try to get that back to Judy and share it with you, Robert. Oh, this was Mike, but that's all right. <laughs> Just I, just, I just know in talking, as I go across the country, uh, in talking to sitting superintendents who are leaving the district, and the board frequently will ask them, do you subscribe to Ed Week? And invariably their answer is yes. I just did a quick search. Total average paid circulation, 49,877. Okay, 50,000. Yeah, approximately 50,000. I guess my two cents worth on it is, I mean, apart from, from Education Week, because people actually, like Mary said, they, people evidently actually do read physical paper there, but beyond that, I'm not real excited about pursuing print ad opportunities. If, if we have to find somebody and the only way we get them is through paper, I don't think they're really forward thinking enough for you know the type of pe people that we're looking for, so. That's a valid point. Anyone else weigh in on Ed Week, whether that's of interest to the board? Um, oh, it's definitely of interest. I mean, it is of interest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, ma maybe I wasn't clear. I, I, I would say that would be the, the ones. yeah, that would be about the, the only exception to my my statement about you know avoiding print. If it seems like this one does have value and.
people that we would be interested in would be reading it, but going too far beyond that for print advertising, I just I don't see a lot of value for what uh, for the target audience that we're seeking. Yeah, I don't think there's any other print ads in here. It, it, it's just that all the rest, uh, you know, the free websites, uh, you know, would be fine. Uh, you know, MSBA ones, MASA, right. MASB, you know, all of those. I guess the question I have about it is, um, so we're printing a promotional flyer on the 31st of January, and this says that it would run twice. I guess, will it be able to run, m maybe I'm not reading it right, three, so it says it would run three times in print and twice on the website. Will they really print it three times within that month of? Oh, it's every week, right? That's the job posting, yeah, not the promotional flyer. No, I know, but we are, the deadline for application materials is March 4th. When are we opening the application? Like, to me, I'm understanding that the application is going to be open from the end of Jill, January 31st to March 4th. Yes. So that's about 30 days. So is this really going to be run three times within those 30 days? I just have a problem with thirty-six hundred dollars if it's if, not going to be run. If you look, if you look further down, there's also <laughs> one that is eighteen hundred dollars that runs twice. Um, so that's another option. Well, yeah, I, I think that there's a mistake here when it says estimated to run three times print and twice on website. When you actually look at the uh, info behind it, eighteen hundred bucks is runs twice in print. You know, and nine hundred a pop. Maybe that's supposed to say three times. I don't know, but it's either two or three times. Right. And if it's weekly, sure, you can get three uh -huh. times in a month. You can get three <coughs> times in a month. So education would be yeah, it's a weekly paper. So, yeah, you you can certainly do it. Okay, that was my only concern. But we may want to think about having it available February first. So, depending upon when their print deadlines are for a weekly, it's probably three days ahead of time. Right. Four at the timing appropriately. Yep. Yeah, that's why we need to decide tonight because I do know that Ed Week needs a long lead time oh. and we'll have to prepare the ad. Um, we have used Ed Week in the past and we have gotten some uh, applications. Normally those applications are from out of state, not from within Minnesota because superintendents who are looking for a job or, and want to stay in Minnesota are going to or potential superintendents are going to know where the Minnesota websites are. Um, I think from my experience in HR, going through Ed Week does get you a wider pool and does have a tendency to bring in candidates from outside the state of Minnesota. Would you say that's correct, Mary or Craig? That is, that is absolutely correct, yes. Can we just get some clarification for Mike's observation about how many times things actually run? Yeah, I can get that okay. one. And can I, I'm just, I'm still on this price of 3600 I know everyone else is kind of okay with it, but if you, Mary, you mentioned that $1,800 is two times for the print, and then up above it says 395 job listing will run on Ed Week for 30 days, and that's included in the base fee. So if you do mm -hmm. the $1,800 for the two times plus the 395, that's 2195. Am I understanding that correctly? Uh, yes, that would be my understanding as well. Okay. And that's, be that's a value when you look at it compared to you know almost 3,600. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. It says 395. So uh, Ray and Associates will cover the 395. Correct. On the website. Yeah. For the no, Lane Associates doesn't cover the 395. This is an add-on. So if you want that, then you would pay, you know, at the suggestion that was made, you would either pay the 395 and the 1800, or you would buy the whole package. But it, so on this on this uh, paper, it says 395 is included in our base fee. In our contract, it says that. It says $395, job listing will run on Ed Week website for 30 days, is included in our base fee. I'm not seeing that on my sheet, but I certainly can verify that. If you're seeing that 
up above. I, uh, oh, I see it. Yeah, 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 this is what I you gave us. I was looking at the, the I was looking at the row below thirty five ninety five. I beg your pardon. Oh, okay. Yes, the three the three ninety five is included in the base fee, uh, which is just the website only for thirty days. But so then, if we just wanted it to run two times, then we just add on eighteen hundred dollars. That's and correct. Okay. For well, print, or maybe that's print. three. We don't know. So fourteen hundred then would do an inline ad. Uh, you know, that would be a banner ad of some sort. So this 395 a job listing seems to me that it's just under a header that says job listings, you have to go look at it. Right. It's not being presented to people as they hit the website. So those are two different types of, of items and two different types of value, two different types of costs should be associated with that. This, Whatever is, we this is sort of a two by three box if you pick the 1800 that, you know, they, they have several pages of ads that are in these boxes. And so it would just be your district in that box. Okay. So it, it does single it out. Right, I think Mike was just differentiating between the idea of having the online listing and the online ad. Yeah, those are two different things. They are two different things. Yeah. I would be comfortable approving any of these companies for no longer than 30 days. I don't know how other board members feel. Um, I wouldn't want to do thirty-five ninety-five for Education Week. Well, we need to see what the you know how many eyeballs does the inline ad get versus, uh, you know, the regular ad is going to run twice, maybe three times, uh, and it's going to you know potentially be seen by fifty thousand users, but you also have a certain percentage that are only going to look online. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending upon if people are hitting that daily, will that inline ad be shown every time someone hits it? Will that be the banner ad for the month? Does it rotate? How many, what percentage of times uh, of page refreshes does it show up? There's a lot of information there that we need to know to determine the value of that. Uh, and then the additional 395 job listing run for an additional 30 days. Well, our, our window's only open for 30 days, mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, we don't need that. Just, uh, just so you know, oh, Evan, I went to Am I hearing you say you would like the 1800 for one month? Uh, that plus possibly the 1400. It, it, it depends upon again how many eyeballs it reaches. Is it is it worthwhile yeah. to to do the inline? Well, well, let's break this down a bit. I mean, can we reach agreement on the 1800 for the print ad? For two or three times, yes. Yes, I'm good with yeah, that. Yeah, I would agree. I am too, Jim. Um, I don't care about dead trees. I just want it on the website. <laughs> According to right now. Uh, at Ed, Ed Week, uh, they that actually put, put, uh, sends you over to topschooljobs.org, and right now there's 36 superintendent listings in North America. And I mean, it, I would say that we'd want it to show up there for for sure. So right. you guys do on paper whatever you want, but <laughs> as long as it's online, I'm and, good. and I and I would agree with that. But it seems so, like so we're Ed Week sends us somewhere else. Anyway. Well, I think they're they're linked. They're connected. Yes, okay. they are connected. It's an so that fourteen hundred dollars would take you to that box. No. We no. we can post it on our own. We have a uh, because we go through Appletrack, we have access to top school jobs without any additional fee. Mm -hmm. So we can yeah. make sure that that's posted there. Oh, okay. okay. So what do we get through through Education Week online? Then do they have their own listings that people would look at? What Education Week offers is just the link to the posting that's going to be on Ray and Associates servers. And if I may, um, without muddying the too much, you know, that's really the general philosophy of, of, of any of this. It, it is the intentionality around driving, making persons aware, but then driving the behavior to go to our website. Um, that's the intent of the profile. Right. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not questioning that. I'm just trying to figure out if we're, you know, paying Education Week, basically to go and post something on another website that we could just do ourselves. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the value add that but Education Week is bringing. There's a third party. Sure. Oh, it's, it's to get it in front of the users on Education Week. Right. If, if that's where they that's start, if that's then. where percentage right. of them start to look for new jobs. Ed Week has their own website, and then Top School Job pulls and puts it on their website as well. Okay, okay, so they scrape education. Yeah, yeah scrape, okay. that's, right. that's the right, right term, yep. That changes things then. Well, I mean, we, the, the 395 for doing the, the basic run is already built in, so we've got that. It sounds like we're in agreement for the 1800 for the print ad. Mm -hmm. 
The remaining question would be the 1400 for the inline ad in addition to the listings, and we just don't have a lot of information on what that is. I mean, when they say it runs twice, I don't know what that means. Is that, you know, two presentations? Is that two week long sessions? Is that X yeah. number of, of impressions? And is, so yeah, is it a fixed banner up? ad? Is it a fixed ad somewhere on the homepage? So yeah, yeah, I've, we need I've, to find you know, I've done a lot of internet advertising work and you know this is not really telling me anything about what it's what the value is well the difference as I know of it and having subscribed to it would be the 1400 <coughs> is not going to have its own separate box it's just going to be a listing of uh, openings and your district would be listed among those as a line a single line mm -hmm. and uh, the other one is going to have you know a uh, it's a limitation of how many words, but in that box, you know, you can you can structure it so that you indicate what the opening is, where it is, and the salary range, and then where they go to apply. So at this juncture, I would I would approve the eighteen hundred and leave it at that. Personally, I'm in agreement with Jessica. Maybe they keep it open for the 1400 to see what additional benefit that provides and again we don't have that information enough to make it but I wouldn't preclude saying no yeah it, it seems like something that we could add on later mm -hmm. I don't so do you want Mary something Craig, like is, is, is there any reason we, we couldn't make that that call later on maybe we aren't getting enough hits initially we want to stir the pots a little bit by putting in the ads the online ads for the 1400 well, it depends on when you learn of that because there is a lag time in getting it into their system. And you certainly want it well in advance of your deadline. Right. Well, the inline ad, the 1400 is like the least attractive ad. The 1800 is a square box that's fully dedicated to Osseo. So the 1800 oh. is the in print. No. Right. Okay, the, okay. The 1800 They're print. both in print. No, no. the 1400 is is Online. a display ad. It's a, not a listing. The listing is 395. The display ad is 1400. We don't know where that's, it's displayed. That's not what she's I saying. I know. She. I don't think she's correct uh, because this says a display ad, yeah. and it runs twice. Again, is that two weeks? It's obviously not twice. It's for probably two one week periods. Right. But where? Does it, is it on the home page? Is it a banner? It, it doesn't say it. I, I'd say we approve for both, but pull back if we had to. But we, we need more information on the We, we need more information on the 1400 sure. because I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure, but, but we're, we're definitely, we're, so, but we're, we're good, scheme. we're good for the 1800. So we can leave, we can move on from that topic at least. Okay. So yeah. in, to summarize, 395, we will post on uh, Ed Week's website for the 395. Plus right now we have authority to spend 1800 for the two by three job listing in print for the 30 days. And then Ray and Associates, can you uh, provide me with some additional information related to the inline ad? And I think Mike, you're interested in what it looks like, where it's displayed, and you said something about hits on the website. What kind of information would you like there? Yeah, I mean, what, what, what's their sales package to show that it's worth that amount? Where is it going to display? Well, how frequently? What's the refresh rate? What percentage of eyeballs are going to see it? Everybody sells their online ads a little bit differently, so it's kind of hard to set parameters for what we want them to tell us. It's just they, they need to tell us what they're offering for the 1400 and then we'll have to d decipher it. So Mary and Craig, can you get that information to me? I made a note of that and to get back to you with that information ASAP. Okay. I would also approve the AASA at 410 for 30 days. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I don't know if I'm jumping ahead. No, Which we one? have to talk about it. AASA mm -hmm. for 30 days. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to go longer than that. Yep. Obviously all the free free sites. Right. And then what, those four other And then ones? those four are kind of hanging out there. Does it make sense, though, to go longer? Just, just so that people have a little time to think about it before the actual application period opens? You mean start, the, start them sooner? Start them a little sooner? I don't know, what do you think about that? Well, are mean, we, are we held to this AASA one? Well, just in general, if we've got this 30-day window or whatever to actually apply, 
I don't like wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to apply for a job tomorrow or today. You might think, oh, this thing popped up in Osseo and I've got an opportunity. Let me think about it and then pull the trigger. We're open in March, correct? So a lot of these no, are. It's, it's open in throughout February. Though. February. So, you know. I would almost say we're in there from mid-January through mid-February as the advertisements generate interest ahead of time, yeah. but we're we're sitting on a January 30th date. So it, it would seem that we, if we wanted to get things going ahead of the January or the February 1st opening, that we advertise one to two weeks ahead of that. So then you're looking well, and I will you, I will tell you as of January 1st or there thereabouts after the holiday period. We will post on Ray and Associates' website a, a information about OCO and the superintendent. It just will not have the profile finished yet because you won't have conducted your stakeholder meetings to get that outcome uh, on what are the characteristics in a leader that you value that create are created by the profile. But it will certainly have notice that this is an opening and that Ray is doing that search, and it'll say more information to follow or something to that effect. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I think, you know, there, there are sort of two seasons in the search business. There's a fall season and then there's after the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think people make, make time over the holidays to give things like this consideration. So um, I think that's it's a good move to get it in before the February if you can. Craig or Mary, I'm, I'm assuming that the the posting that you put on your website that you're trying to drive all the traffic back to, you know, would have things like the deadlines and all that prominently displayed. So if you have somebody that goes in there, they wake up one morning, they browse the ads, not really serious about it, but oh, osseo has got something, they look at it and go, oh, okay, here's the deadline. I'm professional enough where if I'm serious about this, I should probably make up my mind before this deadline that I've already been told about rather than having be prodded through ads. Is there during, during, this, during the search season, we get about 3,500 hits a month on our website. So, you know, it's, it's heavily trafficked. Okay. Can we, on the, uh, all the free ones, I mean, is there any way we can list on those at that earlier time? Yeah, I think you can list on those at any time. You just won't have the flyer, but you still have the, the listing as an opening. I think that's okay. great. Okay. Are we bound? Um, I know what public employees are usually uh, in bound by legal parameters of when you can publicly list um, an opening and then when it closes. Are we in any way bound legally? Um, this is a separate contract, okay. and that's where that's coming up. Um, is that there are parameters in some of our collective bargaining agreements okay. related to the timeline posting. Um, one, one experience I have had is individuals who see a posting, they want to click in to see it right away, right? So if we're advertising something, it would generally be in a different venue if we're, if we're going to do that in advance of the actual posting, okay? so. And I believe, Barb, you're going to talk about a promotional flyer that we'll, we'll be distributing. Do you for wanna, community meetings. For community meetings. But we also create or can work with Ray and Associates to create a promotional flyer that we send out to all of the school districts in the state of Minnesota and others, if you have an interest in that, that basically announces it. And then on the announcement, we can include, and we can put that on our website too, the dates that the posting opens. Is that, mm -hmm. does yeah. that meet your interest there? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so I think we'll also work on a promotional announcement flyer and we'll get that back a to you. A lot of districts, uh, the communications department in a lot of districts will actually create a page on your website that is superintendent search. And you know, people know then that they go to that and, and there's a lot of information and it, it's helpful to your constituents too because you give continual updates in terms of the progression of the process. Yeah, we already have that. Okay. So we'll create that and hopefully that'll meet your interest of getting out because a promotional flyer won't have to have the salary range, not necessarily the job description, a little bit about OSEO. So Barb and I, are you okay with that? Sure. I'm offering on your behalf and not asking you. Barb's just been volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So then that would eliminate the need for a 60-day subscription or whatever. 
fire is kind of hard to get. So smoke. smoke. If you Agreed. can smoke in the fire. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to decide on those other four. No, I, no need to go very specific when we have the broadest range in the country. So, so skip those four. Go with the top two and then all the free sites. Sounds good to me. Well, wouldn't it be worthwhile doing the National Alliance of Black School Educators and the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents just to make sure we cover our bases? Well, aren't they all subsets of Education Week where we're, about, where we're advertising? To, uh, no, I'm saying, are, would, would uh, uh, a superintendent of color only read that one little item or would they be reading Education Week? Uh, probably both. Okay, so, you know, why spend an extra thousand bucks on a very narrow compared to getting the biggest bang for the buck for our advertising reach? It's, it, well, it's $400. 250 plus 150. You just did those two. I think 700, but. No, he's just saying the top two. Oh. As part of our recruitment and retention plan, we do intentionally advertise on diverse websites because it also sends a message on behalf of the school. I mean, are we already doing it on those websites? Have we found value in those websites? Yes, we have. We have. Okay, well then. But I'm not at, that up. not at this level. Okay. But it also shows we're we being do. intentional and that we're welcoming and open. And it's only 400 bucks. So I would suggest we do that. Craig, and if I may offer just a quick observation. Um, I heard you talk about uh, part of your commitment, um, obviously, to diversity and inclusion. And I think it sends a message to those who may uh, be candidates in the field, and while, yes, they may be looking at some of the other broader, um, more traditional or contemporary sites, uh, I think there are those. There is a subset, especially for those administrators of color, that probably do look at those publications as well as other members of the public. And so I think it's about intent. Um, as well as, you know, getting the, the best ROI. So do you cast a wider net? Yes. To what extent is a percentage of your available dollars and um, what additional members of the community might that impact? I think that's a question uh, that I can't answer, but I would tell you that there is probably a greater likelihood than less that by doing that you are going to be casting a wider net. Interesting about that wider net, though. I thought earlier in this conversation you said most of your clients don't use those next four, uh, and they certainly don't use that other optional advertising. Maybe I misunderstood, but that's... No, I, I think what we were trying to imply is that the preponderance of people use EdWeek, whether they are in a minority population or whether they're not. So basically they would already be subscribing to EdWeek and so if, if there are districts that are concerned about overall cost, then we, we indicate to them that is the case. If we're not trying to steer anybody away from any minority publications. Uh, it's more of a cost uh, item than anything else. But there, there, is an, there is that idea of your public seeing the intent. I mean, that, you can't disavow that. So it's, it's whether you know, that intent is important enough for you to spend another $400. I mean, is part of our typical plan when we advertise for new senior level folks to advertise there? Right now, what we're advertising all of our positions through uh, Diversity Magazine. And so it would be our paraprofessional positions all the way through our uh, most senior level positions. That's what we normally do. And this but position would be listed in there? Um, not in that particular advertisement because, again, Ray and Associates is driving the advertising, and so we'll need to pay for any additional websites that you choose here. We can't wrap that under our own. I, I have a question, though. If it's diversity web diversity website, you just said, which, which one is that? Is uh, I don't have the exact name in okay. front of me. I know it's like Diversity Magazine. Okay. But it may not be these two. And if we're, at, if we're looking... Going back to our general look at, at advertising for school leadership positions, we're not currently utilizing this. Was there a decision not to? 
not of those websites. What we do, okay. and I don't have that right in front of me, but we do advertise in specific diverse websites, and I can get you that list. Yeah, I mean, let's look at okay. all the options if we're already doing it and we have a. But she said that this wouldn't be on there. No, not these. Because these are not Ray on and there. Associates right. is in charge of advertising for this position. So they wouldn't put it on their website. That's how I asked. No, 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 it, that, right? no, that's not correct. Uh, that's what she just said. She they're not responsible for advertising. We are. We just are deciding on how much money we're spending and where it goes. Yeah, they're making some recommendations, but if we're already using diversitymag.com or whatever and we're getting hits, we look at that if we already have a yeah. contract. We'd certainly not exclude that. Mary and Craig, could you clarify for that for us? If we already have a partnership or uh, an agreement with a different um, website provider, posting provider through the district, could we wrap that under our account or does it have to be a separate account and separate payment? Well, the only thing We're that I would see as an obstacle would be to make sure that the, if, if you're going to use that, I have no, no uh, qualms about that, that what your listing would include is steering it toward the website that we have yeah. so that all the candidates are getting filtered through the same place and that there's not confusion. Right. I didn't see any problem with that. Okay. Yeah. So Let's use the resources that we're comfortable with and familiar okay. with, but we'll steer it back to the Rays. I mean, we, we can listing. certainly look at number of hits and things like that, but if we already have a very good lead generation in the diversity community, diversity mag. Mm -hmm. Yep. Certainly, I mean, we could look at these other ones too on a cost benefit, yeah. but if we already have a great thing, They're definitely local. go with it. Definitely They're go local. with it. Oh, so much the better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll I'll bring I'll send you a list of where we're currently posting our positions. And is it national reach or not? You know, yeah. that would be. Okay. And then you can let me know okay. what you think about that. Yeah, Does and that you know, and in the future, all of these things for the pricing is kind of useless unless there's an eyeball hit. Right. You know, what what's their readership, and you know, so. I don't, I, you can't make a good recommendation just knowing what the price, how many eyeballs yeah. is that? Mary and Craig, can, consider that constructive feedback for the, <laughs> for the next district you work with. And, okay. and then clarify, um, Judy, is it the, is that the source that you use? You, you, you cut out for a second. Yeah, uh, Judy, is it diverse issues? Is that the? That no, it's, use? it's called Diversity Magazine. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, we do have other websites that we go to specifically, and we also have um, some local publications that we'll advertise on. And as long as I can just make sure that the link is to your website, I think we should, pro as the board has said, uh, we should use our normal modes of uh, communications related to that. And we may so. want to add that to our repertoire too. Jim, does that meet your needs? Uh, yes. Okay. Is, is it Diversity Inc. or Diversity Magazine? Because Diversity Magazine is based out of Canada. Uh, oh. Well, it's... And Diversity Inc. seems Diversity to be more focused on corporate. Business. Diversity Minnesota Business Magazine. Yeah. Uh, so that's just Minnesota. So is yeah. that education specific, Judy, or is that a broader net? It's a broader. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I'll get you the entire list and, uh, so that you can take a look at it of, of where we normally... Perfect. I'll send that via email and then you guys can just share with me what your perspective is and I'll talk with Bob. I mean, one of the other advantages Perfect. too is if this is something that Judy's used to working with. Yeah. Every one of these sites has their own way of submitting things yeah. and yeah. paying for things. If we've got the relationship there and mm -hmm. we post them for other things, it should make the job a little bit easier. Yeah. So but but if it isn't national, if it isn't national, we, we, we should consider the other ones. Right, because these okay. two do say National Alliance Black School Educators the others association of Latino administrators and superintendents, so it seems pretty focused for four hundred dollars national and yet focused. So. Well, you know what? Now, now that you've, if that's what it is, if it's national, Jim, then I'm sold on the both of them. Okay. I mean, I'd have a hard time believing that you're not getting enough eyeballs if this is a national organization, national publication. So how are we leaving that? I'm a little confused. <laughs> That's how we work. <laughs> we're going to go with NAB, we're going to go with NABC, we're going to go with Alice, and we're going to look at our own current uh, Minnesota Diversity Business Magazine. Okay, so okay. we are going so with AASA. Sorry, maybe you want to recap. AASA for, th for 30 days. For 30 days. Yep. The 
eighteen hundred for Education Week, the three ninety five for that for the website for Education Week, the NABSC and the ALAS. Yes. And then all the free ones. Yeah. And then and, one, and then the diversity sites that we have on our end. Mm -hmm. But not ASA at the top? Yep. Yes, yes, for, yes for we for the are. thirty days. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'm on the same page. Thank you. Okay. Takes us a while to get there. <laughs> Interesting, the, the two job openings currently on Ed Week for Minnesota are not listed in uh, ALAS currently. I didn't think, I didn't see my MASB either, but <laughs> that could be an opportunity. Okay, so before I bring this to closure, Ben, I. Bob, you summarized what I had. And uh, the other optional advertising, we are members of the American Association of School Personnel Administrators, so I will, since we're members, I believe that will be free, so I oh, will pursue okay. that. What about the others? I'm not interested in those, I guess I just don't know. The well, other I'm ones just, I don't know. Oh. If, if we already have an existing membership or whatever. Yeah, NAS, the ladders, MSBA, NASB. <coughs> and then just to clarify too on the free ones, the executive only website is the only one that says that the salary amount is required. So for the uh, NASS and Ray, and the ladders that will be posted maybe like mid January, just saying that more information will be coming. I think it'll be posted sooner than that because I'm going to talk to them about seeing if I can't get at least a placeholder on the website before the holidays because you know there's some downtime for administrators mm -hmm. during that holiday period, right. and at least they, there's going to raise the awareness that there is an opening and more will be coming in, in terms of information. So I'm going to I'm going to push that envelope. Okay, so you do those ones, and then our district does MSBA and the bottom three. Our district does that posting? Yes. Okay. So, Judy, can you put those on by? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, so I think we have agreement on <laughs> advertising, and I'm going to reduce my facilitation uh, oh. count by 20 minutes due to inability oh, of the board. Oh. Oh. <laughs> noted. Thank you, Chair Gerhardt. <laughs> okay. Judy, could you, when you send this list out, can you just kind of, uh, I know you took notes, will you just type up like a summary of everything we just Absolutely agreed upon? Thank yeah. you. Okay, so we're through the advertising and now I'm going to turn it over to Barb Olson for the Community Engagement Plan. All right, board members, as we look at the draft communications community engagement plan I sent you, I want you to know that I ran a skeleton version of this plan by Chair Ger Gerhardt a few weeks ago because it was critical that we get, we get an idea of an agreement around the two communication goals because those drive everything. So with his approval of the two goals, I fleshed out the plan further and have actually already started implementing it. So what I'd like to do tonight is talk you through the big ideas of the plan, take note of any suggestions you have, and determine if any board members would be willing to serve in specific roles at the community meetings and possibly other events. So I'd like to start with the goals. You'll see on that plan that, there's, that there are two goals. There's a goal around community engagement, which is to produce input that the board finds sufficient to inform its search for a new superintendent. You'll also see a goal around stakeholder awareness, both of the search itself and where to find more information. The plan is designed to achieve those two goals within the available time frame. And the time frame for the community engagement goal is essentially December and January, leading up to the development of the superintendent profile by Ray and Associates at the end of January. And the time frame for the stakeholder awareness goal is longer because that would run up until the new superintendent is actually hired in early April. So with any communication plan, you know that we use multiple communication channels over multiple occasions in multiple languages within the available time frame. So 
So for example, in this plan, you'll see face-to-face, -face, both meetings, both large group and small group, an online survey, automated messaging, social media, print, local media, and even the elect ASIO electronic billboard. We believe that in any communication plan, by using multiple tools over time, you increase the likelihood that you'll achieve your goals of engagement and awareness in this case. So I'd like to run you through some key elements on the first page of the plan, and then we'll go into some of the next pages with tactics. You'll see the two communication goals and three simple key messages. Basically, the board wants your input to inform its hiring decision. There are two main ways to provide that input, and there are several ways that people can stay informed, with the two main ones being the district e-newsletter and the district website. And I will note that right now, because we're so early in the implementation of this plan, the website is basically summaries of the work sessions that we had so far. But we plan to build that out and add, I don't know if you, any of you looked at the St. Paul Public Schools Superintendent Search section. We'll build it out with more content. Right now, it's just basically, I think, three, maybe four work sessions. So after tonight, uh, pending your direction on this communication plan, we'll start building that out. Okay. So you'll see that we've identified five key audiences, and as you know, there is overlap between them, but distinguish them, distinguishing them as separate audiences just helps us target our communications. And then on the remaining pages, you'll see some examples of tactics and timeline under each goal, under the two goals. So you'll note that this copy of the plan is relatively high level. I am keeping a very detailed, essentially working document because it changes every single day as I add events and connections. Uh, so some of the dates on this plan are already changed. We've advanced some of them, we've made some of them earlier, we've postponed some of them until a little bit later, but it's a plan that is constantly in process. Mike, I think I heard you mention that you had an idea about a tactic we could use of reaching out to city councils. Correct. That is not on here, and I think I also heard maybe an offer that school board members might be interested in visiting those city council meetings to share information about the public community meetings. Yep, absolutely. Is that something? I'll do it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I can probably do two of them because the others are on conflicting nights, so. So would you, uh, would you be going to all the city councils in the cities that are represented by the school district? I don't know if we could do it. I, I had the or actually I had the information for five for Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, Maple Grove, Plymouth, and Osseo. Mm -hmm. uh, Dayton has very few. Uh, I think they're audio taped. I don't know if they're video taped. Mm -hmm. Corcoran, we have very few residents, and Rogers, I think we have ten. But you'd have the five. The, the five big ones, ones, and if we could mm -hmm. get to the other three, not mm -hmm. disparaging them, but they're very small compared to the others, we can reach them through other means. But uh, the five major uh, cities with the greatest population of, of students mm -hmm. would be the way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna make a request for board member involvement in another area too, so how about if we hang on to that thought, because that's one area where we need people to yeah. volunteer. And I just didn't get to the other three websites yet to get their dates, okay. so. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, are there other, you had a chance to review it, are there other big things that you think were missed that are opportunities that we could promote? the information about the school, uh, superintendent search. I'll see message on the 279 side. Yeah, I was just gonna say. It's a given. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what about the Osseo sign on? That's, that's on, on, that's on, on here. here. I thought I heard, maybe I heard that. Okay. No one else has any uh, digital signage, do they? I don't know, Dayton Maple Grove doesn't have any. Oh, Maple Grove does. By the community center? They have one um, by the government center. Isn't there one? Or am I thinking hmm. of something I else? Yeah, I don't know what their calendars are for using that. Across from three square. No, we can inquire. We can inquire. But yeah, the Maple Grove Community Center has a digital mm -hmm. board. And they might be willing to run a message. Mm -hmm. Well, I mm -hmm. don't know, maybe. It's worth a try. We can certainly inquire, yeah. absolutely. And I don't, Brooklyn Park doesn't have, have digital one, do they? Uh, they just put up, yeah, no, they just put up the new mm. metal sign, but I don't know if they've got digital over there. You know, You'll see in the plan that we plan to reach out to their to them through their news to see if we can get information in their news newsletters. Letters. While I contact them, I'll just ask about do okay. you have digital signage? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about yeah. channel twelve? Channel twelve would be local media, so oh. they're <coughs> into okay. the plan. 
<laughs> so yeah, they're uh, you know the uh, you know Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center website. Somebody says city newsletters, but get something on their website. Get something on mm -hmm. their you know they all tweet, they all uh, post on Facebook and everything else. So, yeah. Barb, this is very comprehensive. Thank you. We well, if you have questions, this is like I said, it's a relatively high level view. Yeah. If you ever have a question about are you meeting with X group or when. Just call me. Okay. Because it does change every day. Okay. <laughs> and, and um, do you have anything else you're working <laughs> on? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> uh, but I will uh, take Mike up on his inquiry about or his offer regarding city council meetings. So you mentioned that you could do two out of the three out of three that you already identified. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the dates and basically there are two on the second, two on the eighth, and one on the ninth. What's the okay. date? So we have this eight, the second being Maple Grove and Brooklyn Park, the eighth being Brooklyn Center and Osseo, and the ninth being Plymouth. Second and again, I didn't get to the other three yet. Second of January, but we have already scheduled a work session on the second. Uh, so January. January? Not of January. Oh, you're right. My apologies. What did you say the 8th was? Plymouth and Brooklyn Center? Yeah, Brooklyn Center and Plymouth were both on the 8th. When Did you say Osseo? Oh, I think you said Osseo. Osseo I'm sorry. Osseo and Brooklyn Center on the 8th. The 2nd is Maple Grove and Brooklyn Park, and the ninth is Plymouth. And again, I didn't get to Corcoran, Dayton, and Rogers. 9th of January is our organizational meeting and a work session. Yep. And that's at 6, right? Yes. That would be a short one? Uh, well, we had negotiations. Oh, we got that afterwards. Session or something mm -hmm. right after it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Plymouth meeting, we could have, you know, we could have someone else go as a proxy, but uh, it's at 7 o'clock in Plymouth. Well, I wonder if this would work for you. If, um, let's talk about board member interest in working or, or serving at the community meetings, and then maybe what I can do is gather some additional information about the city council meetings and see if a person is available to go in person, great. If not, mm. what other opportunities are there? Newsletters, outdoor sign, anything else? Would that work for you to gather some information? Yep. Okay. And, and if we can't get to Dayton, uh, I mean, several of us know the mayor of Dayton. He can speak on our behalf at the, at the next meeting. All right. And I think we know a council member in Corcoran and a council member in Rogers. If we had to do that, we, there are connections. Mm -hmm. Then I'd like to draw your attention to the community meetings at each of our comprehensive high schools, and those are listed on page two of the communication plan. They're also described in the draft promotional flyer, which you have in color, and you'll note that it's labeled draft because we would like to roll this out as soon as possible, but I wanted to make sure that you see it tonight before we do so. If you'll remember the Reimagine Minnesota event from last spring, we see these community meetings in much the same way. So there's small group conversation around four <coughs> key questions in this case, and they would all complete the, the 30 quality survey before they leave. So there would be table conversations led by facilitators on lining up student volunteers who are trained in facilitation skills to do that and then individuals just sitting at the table just like they did for Reimagine Minnesota would also just opt in and serve to facilitate at their table. If any board members are interested and available, um, I could certainly uh, use CU in the roles of greeting people as they enter and exit, um, having someone provide a welcome on behalf of the board, that seems a logical thing for the chair or your designee to do providing some context for the meeting. I would provide you information that you could share. And other board members might be interested in coming just to observe, be a visible presence at the meetings. You see the dates are January 10th at Park Center, the 18th at Maple Grove Senior High, and the 24th at Osseo Senior High. You'll also note that we are just like with Reimagine Minnesota, we're offering childcare to people reserved. We are not proposing to provide a meal, however. So I'm wondering if there's any interest by board members in serving in any of those roles at those community meetings. I'm interested. I'm wondering how many people are like how many are you wanting all of us board members to be there? Are you wanting three of us, two of us? How many are you wanting of us? Because you're not serving an official function, you know, you're not meeting to discuss business, 
it's really up to board members about if you're interested in attending. I think visibility of board members is always helpful. Um, I certainly would appreciate a board member um, opening each meeting. But beyond that, it's really up to you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be a greeter. I, I'd be available for whatever on the 10th and the 24th currently. I could do the 18th. I can do the 18th as well. And I would be interested in saying something and then just kind of being an observer. I'm checking the calendar. I believe I'm available for all of them and I probably should be there no matter what, so. Yep. I think I can also do the 10th, but the 24th I'm Okay. I think I'm good. Barb, can I project something? I'm sorry. Sure. I, are you still in need of our services? Because this seems like your your local meetings and just coordinating those, or do we have other business that we need to help you with? You mean during the meeting tonight? Yes. Uh huh. I think I think we can let them go. <laughs> this is this Anything is the next steps that we need to do. Well, I, I just have a question. Go ahead. I have a question about the timeline on. March 19th, when um, we have a potential work, work session scheduled, that was, uh, I think, Mary, you had mentioned that that might be a really long meeting because we will yes. be reviewing, you know, possibly 10 to 15 candidates. So long as in how long? <laughs> About three and a half or four hours, typically. Okay. So. Thank you. That might be something us board members want to decide on a time for that meeting. Well, that's a long, and I know it's spring break around there, so. Yeah. Again, we're not sure if, because viewing those inter interviews are going to be, they're going to be recorded interviews, correct, Mary? They are. Yeah. Yes, so, there's, a, there's a video link that you w observe them on. Oh, okay. So we're, we're kind of looking at a potential for you to on your own time, come in and observe, do it offline, okay. oh. outside of a work session. That's that why we said potential. We yeah. Okay. Or, or, or break it up into a couple different yeah. sessions instead of a four hour. Yeah. yeah. So we don't all have great. to be together to do that one? Right. That's what we're working toward. Okay. That's why we said it's a potential work session okay. because we think it'd be better um, in that particular case. Um, and we have to get our attorney's opinion too, naturally related to data privacy and your availability. Other than Thank that, you for that clarification. So, if, if that if that works for the the attorney, that there's a great benefit in terms of maintaining your candidate pool, and doing it that way, having a work session and board members come in on their own time and observe the the videos and uh, read through all the paperwork. Okay. So uh, the only thing I'll share before we decide if we need anything more from you tonight is that Mary and Craig, I have a meeting scheduled with business leaders in our community on January 25th. So I know the survey closes that morning. I'm just letting you know, giving you a heads up. I will be giving you feedback from that group that same day. So I'll need you to be able to receive it and incorporate it into whatever you're doing with the feedback based on the closure of the survey. That'd be great. We appreciate that. So Mary and Craig, is there anything else you would like to, you need clarification of or anything else you'd like to say before we let you sign off for the evening? No, I'm really impressed with your commitment and the enthusiasm we have. This is, as you know, it's a critically important position and I can tell you're very invested in it and that's more than half the battle for us. So we appreciate your time and your enthusiasm and your willingness to work together with us. We hope that we're going to make your decision difficult so that you end up with <laughs> finalists and, and we'll you have a that. hard time Fair picking enough. among them. So yeah. if, we, if we do that, then we've done our job well. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Social Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, All right. Bye now. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Bye now. Oh, technology is crazy. Yep. So I have... Uh, question on the World Cafe meetings. Mm -hmm. We have them listed only under parents. Uh, I think that ought to be open up to district residents, shouldn't it? You know, they are. Um, so hang on, let me take a look here. They just weren't listed down there on, the, on a line item. Yep, they're under parents as well. So I'm, you're right. I will make sure that they get added under the others. Well, because the certainly the intention is that 
Y'all come, including students. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Employees as well. And employees, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, I yeah, will note so that. That could be added on employees too. I see, yeah. Now, y'all come, is that an official? Southeastern Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other suggestions or questions about what you see there? I think it's great and I can I can call you to ask more Absolutely. specific groups or Absolutely. questions. Great. Yeah. I was just wondering how this works when it when you talk about language specific group discussions. Does mm -hmm. that mean when you when you have a table, mm -hmm. you have a. I've already arranged for interpreters at those meetings so that, for example, there will be a Spanish speaking table. And if there are more attendees than we have, you know, seats for at that table, we'll just pull tables together so that there is an interpreter available for the people who need it, the conversation in that language. any other questions or comments about the communication plan other than fabulous work Barb yeah, thank, thank you, you. Good work. Call me yeah, if you I, have and any I did notice it matches our branding yes, yes. that is true very nice and mm -hmm. that's kind of what our promotional flyer will look like too yeah. when we so I'll just that. note on this one so this the purpose of this flyer is really to promote the community meetings but also raise awareness about the search process overall so that's why you'll see that timeline down at the bottom mm -hmm. Um, I am ready to send this out for translation tomorrow unless you have any questions or suggestions about the content. I do not. I was just looking, wondering about the, the boxes here in this calendar. Mm -hmm. Should those all be grayed out if you know the the online survey closes? Oh, so it's the gray areas where it's active. That's correct. Yep, That's it's actually a, it's actually kind of a green. The green. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's the printer <laughs> quality that makes it look gray. So, um, yeah, these are when things are active, when the activity is actually taking place. Now that you mention it, I, I was kind of thinking it's that too. Is the gray made it look like mm -hmm. nothing was happening? It looked. I'll empty. work with our graphic designer on that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like the rooms aren't marks. available. I, I thought yeah. I was just being picky. Yeah. I will work with our graphic designer on that. That's a good comment. Barb, could yes. you maybe, I know it's highlighted in yellow, but maybe a box around this, your input will help identify something. So that emphasize that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah, we have, we need your input up in the, in the subhead. Oh, need you up there. Yeah, when you're just, middle. when you're, yeah. especially if, in, you know, if English isn't your first language yeah. or whatever. Well, it will be translated too. Yeah, I, I know yeah. you said that. Yeah. Maybe. So what I'll do is I'll work with our graphic designer and say we want to emphasize this and we want to clarify these boxes and then she'll figure out the visual solution for it. So a, a bit of an it, but shouldn't superintendents be capitalized in the blue? Actually not. No, because it'd be Superintendent Kate McGuire in the paragraph following, is that because it's a modifier of Kate? Or that is correct. Okay. I don't remember some of my English. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually more AP style, because everybody has a different style, right? You yeah. just yep. have to pick one and go with yep. it, okay. and we use AP. Right. Personally, I didn't know there were styles, so I learned something oh, yeah. new. Didn't you have to write a paper yeah, for right? your master's? Of course I did. <laughs> oh. So but everybody is I'm understanding that we'll continue to implement. Yep. We'll, I'll work on these with our graphic designer and launch that. And anyone who has any questions, let me know. I made some notes about your availability for those community meetings. Yeah. And what I'll do is just follow up with you maybe to say, okay, here's who seems I'm available. I'm not sure on the 18th, roles. but I'm not sure on the other two. Okay. Um, and, and then and the only one that I you know, have anything going on would be the 18th, but that's a meeting with Kate. So I can flex that around sure. more than likely. So yeah. And I am I definitely not available on the 18th. Okay. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay, we'll figure it out then. And, and then, then Jim, we, I got you too. Do we just, you're going to find out more information about the city council meetings because we didn't decide anything on those? or Yes. Okay. We'll just split them up, divide and conquer. Yeah, yeah and those that you can, you know, you, there may be other ways to still reach without being physically present. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, contacts there can make an announcement during the meeting. Yeah, just send a letter to the council. Please read. Please at the, read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so thank you. We've got a good excuse, like we can't come to your meeting because we're doing our own meeting. Which yeah. <laughs> okay, so in preparation for our work session on January 30th, be thinking about that salary range, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and where you're gonna land with that. I'll be bringing back some additional information related to advertising. We will lock in April 2nd and 3rd for round one interviews. And then also prior to January 30th, you'll wanna be thinking about what should the experience be for the first round group when we're looking between at between six to seven candidates and then the finalists, right? Mm -hmm. So the first round, you've been in stakeholder interviews or those kinds of things, I believe many of you have. And then um, also we're probably interested in getting some writing samples, those kinds of things. And then when we get to the finalists and we need to talk about things like, um, are we touring? Uh, touring the district, meeting multiple groups, community groups, those kinds of things. What kind of experience do we want to our finalists to have? And so um, I think Ray and Associates was going to give us some ideas and we'll share that yeah. with you at that night. But if you have any ideas or suggestions and experiences you've had, because we certainly want to put on our best show because <coughs> the they're interviewing us as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have everything we need for this evening unless board members have any additional questions or comments that you want to make before I pass it on to Chair Gerhardt. Swing uh, once, swing twice. Right. Very good. I guess it's back to very good information. Yep. Very, very laid out. And a lot more yet to come. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, I guess that brings us to adjournment. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we're adjourning at <laughs> seven thirty-six p.m. Fine <laughs> 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 right. facilitation. Twenty-four minutes in advance. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> yeah.